Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Today we will start with the first topic in the class 11 syllabus uh, that is Abhisara, the Trist by Rabindranath Tagore. And uh, today we are going to analyze the poem. But before we start analyzing the poem, we need to look briefly at uh, the ideals and different themes that are expressed in this particular poem. Now, we already know Rabindranath Tagore was a man of prodigious artistic and literary accomplishments. Uh, he was greatly influenced by Buddhist ideals. One of the incidents that influenced him greatly was the establishment of Mahabodhi Society in Calcutta in the year 1892 by the famous Buddhist writer and monk Anagarika Dharmapala. He was uh, the main person behind the revival of uh, Buddhism, Buddhism in India and his movement had greatly influenced Tagore. Now, uh, you will see that in this particular poem, Abhisara the Trist, Tagore employs a very powerful Buddhist meditation which is known by the name Metta in Pali. It is also known as Maitri in Sanskrit. Now, what, what do these words mean? It means that uh, it, uh, these words uh, that these words refer to the meditation that focuses mainly on compassion and this compassion is what it gives rise to a desire to relieve another person from suffering. So in this poem, we see a similar tendency, we see a similar theme that is being expressed. The love that we see in this particular poem is not the conventional romantic love that we always associate with lovers, but it transcends or goes beyond those worldly limitations. So let us start reading the poem directly. Now, Abhisara, this poem was initially published in Bengali uh, in his collection of poems known as Kotha o Kahini in 1899. It was much later translated by Tagore himself uh, and it uh, for, for a collection of his poems known as Fruit Gathering uh, in, eight, in 1916. So, uh, this translation has been done by Tagore himself. So, let us look at the poem directly. Upagupta, the disciple of Buddha, lay asleep in the dust by the city wall of Mathura. So, Upagupta was a disciple, was a follower of Buddha and he lived around 300 BCE and it was believed that Ashoka respected him a lot and was greatly influenced by Upagupta's teachings. So he was one day lying asleep in the dust by the city wall of Mathura. Lamps were all out, it was a dark night, lamps were all out, doors were all shut, everything was closed. There was not, a, uh, one could not see a person around and stars were all hidden by the murky sky of August. So it was a dark, murky means cloudy night in August. It refers to a stormy monsoon night where no one was around. Whose feet were those twinkling with, sorry, tinkling with anklets, touching his breast of a sudden, suddenly uh, amidst this quiet stormy, uh, stormy night where one could only hear the gust of winds, suddenly there was a sound of anklets and the feet suddenly touched Upagupta's chest. 
So one can assume that the person who was wearing those anklets, she was rushing towards the city gates, she was rushing to reach her home and she had perhaps not noticed Upagupta lying down in the dust. He woke up startled. So suddenly Upagupta woke up surprised and alarmed and the light from a woman's lamp fell on his forgiving eyes. Now the light, the woman was carrying a la lamp and suddenly the light fell on Upagupta's forgiving eyes. Now forgiving eyes, this expression is quite important. Uh, I will just erase it and I will write it down for you all. Forgiving eyes, it is important because here a part has been used to indicate the whole. Indicate the whole means the eyes indicate forgiving Upagupta. So a part has been used to indicate to indicate the whole this is known as in figure of speech this is known as cynic doki now let me erase it or write it a little properly so that you all can see it this expression is forgiving eyes, this phenomena of using part to indicate the whole is known as cynic doki. This is important, you can note this down. It was Basav Datta, the dancing girl, starred with jewels. So it was a young girl, a dancing girl. She was starred with jewels. She was, uh, she was all dressed up in all sorts of expensive jewels. Clouded with a pale blue mantle. Clouded here means she was covered with a pale blue mantle here means shawl. She had covered herself with a shawl. The next expression is also very, very important where it is said that drunk with the wine of her youth. So she was conscious of her beauty. She was surrounded by all sorts of material luxuries and she perhaps possessed some sort of vanity because she was aware that she was extremely attractive and good looking. She lowered her lamp and saw the young face austerely beautiful. So she lowered the lamp in order to see that whom she had, uh, whom she had come across and she sees an austerely beautiful monk. Austerely beautiful means someone who is beautiful in his simplicity. The monk was so simple that he appeared divine, he appeared beautiful. Forgive me young ascetic and she instantly asks for his forgiveness and she says forgive me young monk said the woman graciously come to my house and she instantly invites him to come to her, uh, to her house and rest there for a while. The dusty earth is not a fit bed for you and she offers uh, him the comfort of her house and says this dusty bed is not the perfect, uh, this dusty road is not a perfect bed for you. Please come to my house. The young ascetic answered, Woman, go on your way. When the time is ripe, I will come to you. So the young ascetic here not only answers, but he also makes a promise unknowingly. He says, Woman, go on your way. Today you go back to your home, go on your way. I will meet you when the time is ripe means when the time is right, I will come and visit you. Suddenly the black night showed its teeth in a flash of lightning. So it was a wild tempestuous night. Showed its teeth, black night showed its teeth. It is an example of personification. And in a flash of lightning as if 
the night the dreadful night was even more visible it was made more dreadful with the flash of lightning the storm growled from the corner of the sky and the storm growled there was a howling sound that came from the thunder so here also we see a use of personification and the woman trembled in fear so the night was extremely tempestuous it was dark it was cloudy the woman trembled in fear and she returned to her home she rushed to her home now monsoon or any kind of season uh, season that are depicted any season that is depicted in tagore's poem generally has deep symbolic meanings here also august can be symbolic of vasav datta's uh, mind which was clouded and darkened by all sorts of material pleasure by all sorts of material earthly worldly things that she possessed her mind was clouded and darkened okay so we stop here for the day the next part of the poem we will again discuss in our next video i hope this was helpful if you have any further question regarding the poem regarding the idea of the poem please feel free to write it in the comment section i will get back to you all as soon as possible thank you for watching my video if you like my work please like share and subscribe to my channel i will again meet you all in the next video thank you